What was once considered science fiction has now become science fact. Earlier this week, NASA announced the planned April 17th launch of an experimental satellite. Its mission? To search over 500,000 stars outside our solar system with the goal of finding new Earth-like planets. It's called the Transiting Expo Planet Survey Satellite, or TESS for short. Here with more about the mission is CBS News science contributor and City University of New York physics professor Michio Kaku. Professor, good morning. Morning. So tell us about TESS. What exactly is TESS hoping to find out there? Well, the holy grail of planetary astronomy is to find a twin of the Earth in outer space, a doppelganger. Right. And TESS may actually hit the jackpot. This is a potential game changer. It's going to analyze half a million stars, yep. identify 3,000 planets, and among them... Among them, we might find this, uh, hit the jackpot and identify an Earth-like twin in space. This is amazing. This is something for the history books. So this isn't the first time. NASA also has Kepler, right, to search for these other potential planets. How, how do these two compare, these two satellites? Well, Kepler was the first and identified 4,000 potential planets out there. But it only analyzed a small little dot in the Milky Way galaxy. Right. It had a stationary target, mm -hmm. always analyzing planets within that little disk. However, TESS is going to analyze the entire northern and southern hemisphere. Wow. Eighty-five percent of the entire sky will How be analyzed How does it do that, TESS. Professor? It's going to rotate. It's going to rotate very precisely so that the cameras will be able to take pictures of large areas of the sky mm -hmm. to look for nearby planets. Now, in two years, the Webb Space Telescope goes up into orbit, a replacement for the Hubble Space Telescope. And we hope to have pictures, get this, actual photographs of these Earth-like planets in space. This is amazing. What would you say the percentage of these undiscovered planets, how many are really Earth-like and potentially inhabitable? Well, we can now take a census of the Milky Way galaxy. It turns out that on average, every star has a planet going around it on average. One in 20 have perhaps an Earth-like planet, which means that in our own backyard, there are billions, billions of Earth-like planets right in our own Milky Way galaxy. Well, Who would have thought? So when you search for new planets, of course, there's always the chance you might discover alien life. Now, the late Stephen Hawking suggested maybe we didn't want to find alien life because we, we wouldn't like what we found. What do you, what's your take on this? I happen to agree with uh, my, my former colleague, uh, Stephen Hawking, about this because we don't know what their intentions are. We think they're out there. We don't know whether they can visit us or not. Right. But if they can, they're hundreds, thousands of years more advanced than us. You're are you convinced of this? I'm convinced that they're out there. The yeah. odds are way in their favor now because of all these discoveries from, from the Kepler satellite. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, they're going to be peaceful. However, you can't rule out the fact that something like what happened when Cortez met Montezuma yeah. and the Aztec Empire collapsed within a matter of months to years. Yeah. That cannot be ruled out. So I think it's not good for us to advertise our existence to alien life forms in space. I want to ask you about UFOs while we're mm -hmm. on this topic here. So there was an American airline pilot who said that he spotted some sort of uh, what appeared to be a UFO. And then there was uh, another Learjet pilot who also saw the same thing. What do you make of this? Well. 90% of the emails I get, you can explain very easily as the planet Venus, comets, meteors, weather anomalies. But the last 10% sends shivers up your spine because they could be a new form of hypersonic aircraft experimented by the Air Force. They could be maybe unauthorized weather balloons that are not in anyone's chart mm. or you can't rule out they could be visitors from another world. There are actually radio recordings uh, from the pilots that were published by a website. If we can, let's take a listen to those. Albuquerque, 7 Papa Golf. Number 7 Papa Golf, go ahead. And was there anybody that's not, uh, above us that passed us like 30 seconds ago? Number 7 Papa Golf, negative. Okay. A UFO. <laughs> Again, those were that's uh, I think we, we heard an American Airlines pilot there talking about something that passed overhead. Uh, this was published on a website. A little eerie when when it can't be explained. That's right. And these are seasoned pilots with thousands of hours of experience. This is not a lark. This is not just some kind of thing that someone saw one day. No, two people saw it in two different jets. 
Yeah. And it means that we have to take these things more seriously. Mm -hmm. So I think the government, as we now know, has been leaking false information about UFOs in order to divert attention away from the stealth bomber and different kinds of experimental aircraft that are experimented with in Area 51. So I think the government should be a little bit more honest about some of these sightings. All, All right. right, Professor Michio Kaku, thanks so much for being with us this morning. We look forward to what tests will bring back.